We also, as we've talked about in some of our prior conversations, can use when we think of uh, penetration testing and vulnerability assessments, which we've talked about prior, uh, can use scanning software. And we've talked about scanning and how scanning can work. We can use scanning software to be able to effectively achieve some of the desired results from those tests. We can find out about information running in a system. We can look for services. We can map ports. We can figure out the operating system. We can map out the network and see who's where and what they're doing. Scanning can be very powerful. It could do all sorts of stuff. We could do ping scanning. That's what one of the majority uh, of the tools that we use for scanning will do, or one of the mechanisms it will use, is they will go out and they will use ping scanning. They will set effectively, the tool does, automated fashion, send out ping requests through each IP address that you provide, either in sequence or on a list or one at a time. And it's going to automate walking through those IP addresses, pinging them, getting back a response if there is something alive on the other end and mapping that information point, telling you what's there. Or it's going to say, hey, nobody's at 192, 168, 10.12, 10.13, or 10.14, but 10.15, there's a machine, boop, and it you know, puts a little pin on the map for you, and it starts to lay out where all the machines are. Any of the modern scanning programs will do something like this. I mentioned a few of them, uh, Ultra Port Scanner, Angry IP Scanner, Nessus will do this, Nmap will do this, WinMap or ZenMap, which are the mapped are the um, Windows equivalents of Nmap. Any of them, all of them will do this. They're all scanning programs. And they basically use ping scanning to be able to go out and figure out who's alive and walk through those machines, looking at ports, at services, at information, and then mapping it out. So ping scanning is really just the ability to be able to use ping as a tool to be able to figure out and visualize where things are. We can use Traceroute, which is another tool, often built into modern operating systems as well, that we can use to effectively map out a path from where we are to wherever we want to go. Uh, if I'm going to start out here, sitting in front of you, talking today, and I want to be able to wind up seeing a website for www.isc2.org, uh, there's a travel path that I have to go down, a road that's well-defined to get me from the geographic location I'm sitting in, very secret, don't tell anybody where I am, right? So wherever I am, and ultimately get to where the ISC2 squared website is going to be, right? And so we have to think about that. And so Traceroute allows me to be able to diagnose what that route looks like and see it. So we can go in and we can use Traceroute. We just bring up our command buffer here, or command shell rather. Let's just clear the screen so you know, we can see everything right at the top. And I do this. And again, just reminding you, of course, it would help if I did that, um, reminding you that if you need to, first of all, learn how to spell and type correctly, that's always important. Uh, but aside from that, if you need to look up how a tool works, I've showed you this a couple of times with things we've gone into in the command show when we've looked at something like IP config or whatever it may be, if you're not sure how it works, just type the command or at least the name of the command that you believe is what you want to see forward slash question mark, typically, at least in Windows anyway, will more often than not bring up a help file, whatever information is in the system about that. And you can see here that tracer with the little question mark brings up a basic user file. These are the switches that we can use to configure tracer, and you can see what it looks like. And so if I use tracer, and instead of using the uh, question mark, I do www.isc2.org, or I can do you know anything, doesn't matter what hit enter, eventually it'll go out over 30 hops. A hop, remember, is a connection from one IP endpoint to another. So I'm jumping from my machine to a gateway, from that gateway to another gateway. That's another hop, and you can see it enumerating on the screen. And if I go all the way through, eventually I'll either get to the endpoint I want, isc2.org, or I'll get to a gateway, a border device of some kind, a router, a firewall, a, scan, a filtering device, an IDS, an IPS, whatever it may be, some sort of gatekeeper that is either going to block my ping request and block the trace or is going to allow the traffic in. And every time I hit a hop here, I'm effectively having that conversation. At some point, I'm going to either get to the end and get a final address resolution to show my path or I'm going to start seeing asterisks much like you're seeing on the screen right now, and that's going to indicate that I've hit a gateway or some sort of device that's not talking back to me. It's effectively decided it doesn't want to have a conversation. And you can see there's a few of those going on there, which means that at that point, I've effectively ended my ability to see the path. I'm not going to be able to go any further. I've kind of come into a 
call the sack and I'm looking at a brick wall and there's nowhere for me to go because the device in front of me is just not interested in having this conversation. It's not interested in allowing the ping traffic to uh, go any further. And so I could break that with a control C just to stop it. Otherwise it'll go for another, you know, 15 or so lines before it stops. Uh, but you could see that what I did get would allow me using trace route, just highlight so you can see here until we get to a request timeout, allow me to be able to see effectively a path that I can travel to get to isc2.org. If I pull up the website, we know it's there. So we know that it's not going to disappear. Uh, starting on line uh, nine, we just know that we can't get any further in order to see it. So trace route would allow me to walk through that path and figure out what it looks like and figure out how we can actually get there if we have to diagnose it for some reason, whatever may be going on. So it could be used to maliciously map uh, network paths. It could also be used for good. It could be used to, uh, as you can see, diagnose a problem. Maybe where we have that break around uh, path four or whatever that particular line was where it said request timed out, but then it picked up again. There could be a problem there. We may be dropping packets or there may just be a device that's not answering, but is propagating, is passing my traffic through. And we may want to know that. We may want to be able to take some information down and look at the path and try to figure out what may be going on there. So it can help us to be able to find good stuff. But again, like anything else, as we talked about with penetration testing and vulnerability assessments in our earlier conversations, we can use that information for good or for bad, depending on who we are and what we want to know.